Word on Fire is brought to you by Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Chicago area since 1837. This is Cardinal Francis George, and I invite you to join me for the next few minutes to reflect with Father Robert Barron on the Word of God, which is the Word on Fire. Father Barron will challenge us to open our hearts to the Word on Fire, which is God's Word of Love for each of us. If our hearts are open, the Lord can change and transform us so that we might speak with love about the one who is love. The Archdiocese of Chicago, through the generosity of Sacred Heart Parish in Winnetka, now presents The Word on Fire. Peace be with you. Friends, I don't know if you had the chance to read the Pope's new book. It's called Jesus of Nazareth. If you haven't, don't walk but run to the bookstore and get it, or call Amazon and order it. It's a wonderful book. It's deeply insightful, and it's relatively easy to read. Even though it's written by one of the great academic theologians of the 20th century, it's rather unencumbered by lots of academic jargon. Well, to me, the most interesting section of this book comes about a third of the way through, when Josef Ratzinger, Pope Benedict, engages the work of an American rabbi named Jacob Neusner. Neusner is a rabbi and theologian, who's written an extraordinary number of books and articles on biblical theology. He grew up around Christians, lectures with many Christian scholars at the university where he teaches. He has a deep respect for and interest in Christian theology. In fact, he so respects Christianity that he's willing to engage its claims and take them seriously, even when... They disagree with his own convictions. Too much ecumenical dialogue, especially in the years after Vatican II, has been flat and uninteresting. How come? Precisely because no one wants to offend. You know, the great goal of much ecumenical conversation in the last 30 years has been to get along, and there's nothing in the world wrong with getting along. However, the trouble is, a lot of our really consequential differences are ironed over. Josef Ratzinger likes the fact that Jacob Neusner engages in much harder-headed ecumenical conversation. He wrote a book called A Rabbi Speaks to Jesus, and the Pope liked this book a lot. What Neusner does in this text is he enters imaginatively into a dialogue with Jesus. He imagines himself as a Jewish listener of the first century, sitting in the crowd as the young, charismatic rabbi from Nazareth speaks. What's his reaction as he hears the words of Jesus? How would a first century Jew take it all in? Well, he signals his deep admiration for Jesus. Many of the things that Jesus says are wonderful, are deeply in tune with the prophets and the patriarchs. He is in many ways, Neusner says, a great Jewish teacher. And any attentive, intelligent first century Jew would have seen that. However, he says, Jesus adds something new, something you don't find in the patriarchs and the prophets. And this, Neusner says, is the problem. Jesus adds himself. What do I mean? Well, listen to some of his words. Unless you love me more than your mother and father, more than your very life, you're not worthy of me. Now listen, no prophet, no patriarch, not even Moses, would ever arrogate to himself that kind of authority. You might imagine one of the prophets saying, unless you love Yahweh more than your very life, you're not worthy of him. Okay. But can you imagine Isaiah or Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Abraham, Jacob, saying, unless you love me more than your very life, you're not worthy of me? This Neusner says, bothers him. Jesus says, you've heard it said, but I say... Well, that's in the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard it said, where? In the Torah. 
Well, the Torah is the Word of God. That's God's own law. Moses receives the Torah, and then every figure after him, including the great prophets, point back to it. Yes, they call people to allegiance to the Torah. Listen to it. Return to it in faith. But nobody ever says in the Jewish tradition, well, you've heard it said in the Torah, but I say, that's to claim an authority greater than that of the Torah. Neusner says, as a Jew, I just can't tolerate that. I just can't accept that. How about this one? It's a bit more subtle, but interesting. Jesus says, In me find your rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, we say, okay, that seems rather uncontroversial. Ah, but listen to it now with Jewish ears, Neusner says. In me find your rest. Well, where was a pious Jew supposed to find his rest? In the Sabbath. The Sabbath, the great day of rest. The day of Yahweh, the day that belongs to God. That's where you find your rest. But now we have Jesus, this rabbi, this human being, saying, I am the one in whom you find your rest. He now identifies himself with the day of Yahweh, with the Sabbath. Hmm, Neusner says. This Jesus is an attractive figure, yes. Inspiring, yes, of course. Like Jeremiah and Isaiah, yes, in many ways. But he identifies himself with God. And this a good Jew cannot accept. More to it, Neusner says. From an Old Testament perspective, the Messiah was supposed to bring something. Namely, universal peace and well-being. He was to usher in an age of righteousness. Well, says this American rabbi, along with many of his co-religionists, say what you want about Jesus. Say he's a great teacher. Say he's a great inspiring figure. He didn't bring these things. You know what I'm saying? Just the most casual survey of the news would show he didn't bring these things. There isn't universal peace. The age of righteousness clearly hasn't come. Therefore, Neusner says, he can't be the long-awaited Jewish Messiah. Okay. That's strong stuff. That's a strong argument. This is not namby-pamby uh, ecumenical dialogue. This has taken on the central issue. And Josef Ratzinger likes it. He likes the frankness and bluntness of this appraisal. And he feels that entering into dialogue with Neusner helps to clarify enormously some major points of Catholic theology. First, Neusner is right about the claims of Jesus, says the Pope. Even though it runs counter to much liberal academic theology from 200 years ago to the present day, Jesus did indeed claim a unique divine authority. Though it goes against the grain of a lot of our spiritual writing today, Jesus did not present Himself merely as one more in a long line of prophets. No, no. He did present Himself as the one who in His own person had the authority of Yahweh Himself. Offensive? Well, maybe, but that, says the Pope, was indeed the claim of Jesus. And therefore, now everything will hinge on this, therefore, Jesus presented Himself as the culminating figure in the long story of Israel. And it's around this affirmation that the Pope crafts His answer to Neusner. Listen. God created, not out of any need of His own, but simply out of a desire to share His beauty in His life. He wanted human beings to find themselves precisely by accepting His love and by sharing it with the rest of creation. This desire of God, expressed clearly in the book of Genesis, was interrupted by sin. 
Look sometime at the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, stretching from the story of creation, Adam and Eve, the fall, all the way through Cain and Abel, Noah's Ark, the Tower of Babel. What you see is a brilliant symbolic depiction of what sin looks like, of what went wrong with God's plan. Hatred, separation, scapegoating, violence, murder, domination, suffering. God's desire for us interrupted by sin. So what did God do? Now turn to chapter 12 of the book of Genesis. He chose Abram, later called Abraham, to go from Ur of the Chaldees to a promised land. He called Abraham to obedience, and through him he began the formation of a great people. A people according to his own heart. A people formed according to his law, formed according to his desire. This long history commencing with Abraham, stretching through Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, the long slavery in Egypt, the liberation associated with Moses, the giving of the law, the entry into the promised land, the emergence of the prophets, the exile to Babylon, the return, the establishment of the temple. This whole great story is the story of Yahweh forming a people according to His heart. And what was the purpose of this people? To bring salvation to the world. Not to revel in the fact that they were specially chosen, no, but to see their vocation as the means by which God would bring salvation to the whole world. A light to the nations. Now, listen to this line from our first reading. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. That's Isaiah's dream. That through this people Israel, God would draw the nations of the world into right worship. He'd bring them to Jerusalem. Okay. Who is Jesus? Jesus is presented in the Gospels as the fulfillment of this promise. As the climax to this ancient story. On the one hand, He is fully human. Yes, the Jewish rabbi from Nazareth, a successor of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David. Yes, a great prophet of Israel. Neusner sees this rightly and appreciates it. But then comes that stumbling point. He was also, the Gospels claim, God. As we say in the Creed, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. That means He's also Yahweh in person. That means He's also the God, listen now, not simply of Israel, but of all the nations. Precisely as divine, Jesus is the one now who can open the way to bring the God of Israel to all the nations. Precisely by assuming the divine authority, he brings Israelite history to its fulfillment and becomes the means by which the tradition of Israel becomes a saving message to the world. In that way, the Pope says, he did indeed bring the Messianic era. He has brought peace to the nations because he's brought the God of Israel to the nations. Take a look at the Pope's book, especially this argument with Rabbi Neusner and see the power it has for understanding who we are as a Christian church. And God bless you. I hope that you were moved today by the word on fire. I pray that together we might become a people on fire with love for God and neighbor here in Chicago and wherever these words are heard. Until we join Father Barron again next week, I'm Cardinal Francis George. God bless you. The cemetery ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. Cardinal George says, It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 43 Archdiocese of Chicago cemeteries willing to help you during times of loss. Call 708 
449-6100 for assistance. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837.